afternoon, everybody. Um, whenever I get in front of a microphone, I uh, want to break into a wild thing, um, but I better not because it's not karaoke, so I'll, uh, I'll resist the temptation. Um, but uh, I, I want to, to say thank you um, to the BPS for inviting me. Um, I think the reason why they invited me is because I emailed them quite a bit to say I'd like to come, and eventually I think they gave in. So, um, so it's a delight for me to, to be here. Um, I came to the event last year and, uh, and really felt inspired by the, the graduates and the students that I met and felt it would be really useful for, for you to find out a little bit about counselling psychology and, and the journey to become one. So, um, so it's a real pleasure for me to, to be here. Um, so I guess just to, to sort of uh, say a little bit about myself, um, I'm a, a chartered counselling psychologist with the BPS, um, HCPC registered psychologist as well, and um, I also run my own private practice, so um, it's called North Yorkshire Psychological Therapies, if you want to Google me and <coughs> see how much I charge then you're welcome, um, and, um, and I also... Um, uh, I guess my route into psychology, I did a psychology degree and uh, went on to work as an assistant psychologist in learning disabilities. Um, I loved it, I loved my work and whilst I was there I um, it, it undertook the qualification in counselling psychology which is the BPS sort of independent route towards being a, a counselling psychologist. Um, so I will talk a little bit about that route and tell you a bit more, more about kind of how you get onto that as well. Um, since then, because that route isn't a doctorate, but it's a doctorate uh, level, but it isn't an actual doctorate because it's not affiliated with the university, I um, went on and did a doctorate in psychology at Teesside University, so it was like a top-up doctorate, so, um, so I got the title, uh, which kind of maybe isn't so important, but when you work in academia, it kind of is. Um, but it certainly didn't stop me from, uh, from getting work in the NHS or getting work in in an academic setting, um, but um, uh, I, I certainly don't use it on aeroplanes um, in case anything happens and then they think I'm a medical doctor, because uh, I'd be absolutely no use if somebody had a cardiac arrest. Um, so um, I'm also the programme director for the Doctorate in Counselling Psychology at Teesside University, um, so I teach on the programme and I run, run the programme there with a, with a great team of, of counselling psychologists, um, one of whom is actually in the, um, the uh, marquee area, uh, Jess, she's got a fluffy pink coat on because she's called, so uh, do, do introduce yourself to Jess. Um, I'm also uh, the training lead for the Division of Counselling Psychology, so every branch of psychology has its own division um, and uh, we're there to represent counselling psychologists throughout the UK and my role is to link with all of the university courses that teach the doctor in counselling psychology um, so, so I have kind of good links with, with other courses, other people. Um, I um, have uh, a little bit about me as a human being, beyond, uh, beyond being a psychologist. Uh, I've been married to, to my wife uh, for seven years. I've been together for nearly 15. Uh, I love yoga, and I think that things like other things outside of psychology are really important. Self-care, I've been chatting with my, my colleagues who've been speaking today about how uh, pressured and overworked people are, um, and the importance of, of self-care really kind of matters. So I love the outdoors, I'm a vegetarian, I love my food, and, uh, and I'm very passionate about, about equality, and yes, I'm somewhere in my 40s as well. <clears throat> so here's Jessie, but she hasn't got a pink coat on, so uh, at least you know who she is now. Um, so, so some of the myths, and, and this is one of the reasons why I really wanted to speak today, because um, there are many myths about counselling psychology, and, um, and you know, I work um, very closely with our clinical psychology colleagues, particularly because we do very, very similar work. And I spoke to students last year, graduates last year, who said, you know, um, I, I'm really interested in clinical psychology. And I'd say, oh, that's great, and I'm, I'm glad. You know, it's a good profession to be in. Um, tell me why. And people would say, because you, you, uh, they carry out assessments, they do psychometrics, uh, they're interested in diagnosis, they work with very complex mental health problems. Oh, yes, they do, you're right. But counselling psychologists do as well. And, and I think this is really important, that quite often, perhaps at undergraduate level, um, people are not hearing about counselling psychology. But we've been around for 22 years years so we're quite well established and there's a lot of us so um <clears throat> so do do rethink that um if um if, if it's suitable for you so we do work with complex cases we do work within the nhs we also work in the private sector we work in academic settings as well and many people set up their own private practice 
And I think the beauty of, of being a counselling psychologist is that we can work in a, a whole range of, of areas. Um, we don't have to just kind of stay in one particular area. So many counselling psychologists will do a little bit of work in the NHS and they'll maybe do a little bit of private work as well. And that's great for variety and, uh, and, and kind of maintaining your motivation and interest in your work. Um, and we do conduct psychometric assessments. We, we do lead, develop teams, and um, provide supervision to other psychologists. Um, and we do recognise the importance of neuropsychology and how that influences um, the development and, and the maintenance of, of mental health problems. Um, and, um, and yes, I've mentioned diagnosis. Um, we acknowledge diagnosis. As Peter said this morning, um, I think we have to be very critical of diagnosis, but we certainly acknowledge that for some people it's really important. Um, and we work with teams. We work as part of multidisciplinary teams, and so we have a lot to, to offer there. So, so I just hope that the, the main thing that you go away from today is A, that my favourite karaoke song is Wild Thing, and B, um, that, um, that counselling psychologists do a whole range of things that perhaps you didn't realise. So I do hope that's something you take away from today. Um, so, so really kind of the way in which counselling psychology works is that we have this sort of integration of, of research, we are scientists, practitioners, so research underpins um, everything we do, evidence-based practice, practice-based evidence, that's been discussed today already. Um, also the therapeutic practice and the therapeutic work that we do, the clients that we work with, that's very much part of our role and that's integrated with psychological theory. So when people say what's the difference between a counsellor and a counselling psychologist, we have psychology in our background. We have a degree in psychology that underpins the way in which we um, view and work with human distress and, and difficulty. Um, but at the heart of what we do, and that's why it's at the heart of this, this triangle here, is the therapeutic relationship. Um, and we are the only branch of psychology that is um, where the um, uh, trainees are required to undertake their own personal therapy. Um, and that might come as a surprise because we're working with complex people, we're working with very difficult presentations. But what about what we bring to the relationship? In any relationship, it isn't just about one person, it's about the interaction between two people. Um, and so that, that kind of element is, is, is vital for us to understand what it's like to have therapy, but also to, um, to work on any issues that might get in the way of the therapeutic relationship being what it can be. So, um, so I hope that we have a sufficient level of self-awareness, and I hope that's, uh, that's demonstrated by any counselling psychologist that you, you come across. And there's quite a lot written here, but sometimes it's useful for people to kind of see, um, see things and not just hear them. Um, but, but there are two different routes into to being a counselling psychologist. The first one is the one I, I touched on earlier, and this is the qualification in counselling psychology, sometimes known as the independent route, because in many ways you are training independently. The BPS oversee the course, you have a, what they call a coordinator of trainings, a, a counselling psychologist that you identify, you find yourself, um, uh, who supports you to develop your kind of training plan, your program. Um, and that program might be, for, for example, for me, I did a diploma in counselling, um, I did a certificate in CBT, I did a certificate in psychodrama. So, and you have to have working knowledge of at least two therapeutic orientations. Um, so I did those things. At the time I lived in Liverpool and there wasn't a course local to Liverpool. There is now, there's one in Manchester. Um, and so at the time I, I, could, I, didn't, I wanted to stay in Liverpool. I was working as an assistant psychologist and, um, and it suited me to kind of do that kind of route. It was more flexible. Um, it took me eight years and um, yes, maybe I procrastinated a little bit, um, but I was working. I gained a huge amount of experience. And it was very valuable, so I don't regret that. Um, but that was just the choice that I, that I made. Um, but it is a minimum of three years. I'm not exactly sure what the maximum is, but certainly it's, it's, it's a minimum of three years and there is that flexibility. So you can kind of spread the cost and that's often an issue for, for any training outside of clinical psychology that is self-funded. All, all the other training courses are self-funded. Um, but you can choose the theoretical orientations. Um, and pretty much you can study anywhere in the UK. Um, you do have to be supervised by a clinical or counselling psychologist and you have to undertake therapy. Um, I guess um, I, I'm very familiar with that route because that's the route I've done and obviously I'm familiar with the doctorate because I teach on, on that at Teesside University. Um, uh, there are 13 courses in the UK altogether. There's quite a few in London, there's Wolverhampton, there's one in Glasgow, um, Manchester and, and there's one at Teesside. Um, all the courses um, are differ. So I think you, you need to look into which one kind of appeals to you the most. It might be governed by the geographical area that you prefer to live in, but equally it may be governed by the kind of 
interests that you have in terms of the therapeutic orientation. So do have a look at the websites. And you'll see I've put that quite a lot through these slides. Check the courses for details because they do differ. Um, but, but I guess the benefit of the doctorate in cancer psychology, it is a doctorate, so you do have that doctorate title. And maybe that isn't important, maybe it is. Um, and, um, and there's a lot of peer support. The lectures are organised as they are with, with any other um, kind of structured uh, course. And you're given support to find placements and, um, and, and motivated by other people. So there's lots of, lots of benefits to that. And counselling psychology generally um, really attracts a very diverse range um, of students. And we work um, alongside students who are um, uh, mature students, students from a diverse range of backgrounds and experiences, um, some students that have done, had a completely different career path have perhaps been teachers or nurses, um, and some students who've come straight from their degree. So um, I think that diversity brings a real richness, not only to the training, but also to the, to the profession, and, and really mirrors the richness in our society. So I'm very proud of, of that aspect of counselling psychology. Um, but do have a look at the BPS website. They, if you type in uh, accredited um, courses, accredited, accredited doctorate courses in the UK, they will tell you exactly which ones and there are and where they are, and then you can look at the websites and find out more. I will give you my email address at the end. Um, because I'm the training lead for the division, I'm more than happy, even if I wasn't, I'd still be more than happy to receive emails from you if you have questions about um, kind of, you know, is there a course here or what do I do about this or anything like that, you know, do, do feel free to, to email me. Um, so in order to uh, qualify for a place, um, you need a degree in uh, psychology, 2-1, usually a 2-1, um, but many courses will accept a 2-2, um, certainly at Teesside we do, and I know other courses do as well, so, um, so there is that flexibility. Some experience of working face-to-face -face with people, and often this is the tricky bit, people say, oh, well, I'm not qualified as a counsellor, how do I get that experience? Well, you don't need, it doesn't need to be counselling experience, it might be work as a support worker, as an assistant psychologist, as a carer assistant, um, as a volunteer within a homeless hostel. It could be a range of things. Um, so, so I think the important thing is that you're working face to face, not, not on the telephone, but face to face with people who are in distress, that you get that experience um, and that you can develop some skills in relation to that as well. You also are required for most courses, and again, check each course out, um, uh, to have a certificate or equivalent in counselling. Um, and and Come with an understanding of what counselling psychology is. It's amazing how many people come to the interview and they talk about counselling. And we all cringe. Oh, we did three years psychology degree and we've done all this further study and you're calling it counselling. It's counselling psychology. Nothing wrong with counselling. I have lots of uh, respect for counsellors as well. Um, but, but we're counselling psychologists. So, so come prepared. And I'll, I'll um, signpost you to some, some texts that are particularly relevant uh, for you to read in order to prepare for an interview. Um, so usually you do need an interview. The courses do that, that very differently. And the, the willingness to commit personally and professionally. Um, it is a full, full on course. Um, uh, usually the course is three years, it's full time. You're out on placement, you're developing yourself, you're in therapy, there's all kinds of stuff going on for you personally. So it's a, it's a real balancing act between the kind of um, time commitment, developing new skills and learning about yourself. So. Um, you really need to be ready for that and, and resilient enough to, to, to cope with that because it's pretty, pretty full on. Incredibly rewarding, but, but full on. Um, so um, the training, we, we, as I said before, we train in two therapeutic orientations, um, a counselling. You have to have 450 hours of client contact. That's 450 hours of sitting with clients. Not the same one, because that would be a lot of hours, um, but many clients. Um, you need to have worked in, uh, in two, at least two different uh, context. So you might work in an adult mental health service and you might work in a, in a child service, for example. Um, and, uh, and you have to have around 40 hours of personal therapy. This varies from course to course, so again, check that out. And then there's the usual kind of academic work, um, often an exam, certainly a thesis to write at the end of, of your, um, your three years or however long it is that you're studying, and, and other assessments as well. Um, this is the painful bit, but there is some good news coming. <clears throat> and I'm keeping these three ladies up there in suspense because uh, I said, I've got some good news. I'm not telling you yet. So I'm glad to see that they arrived for my good news. Um, but um, but the, the course is, 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 um, is expensive and uh, it ranges. And I've kind of done a little bit of research. So forgive me if, if some courses are less or more. But the cheapest course I could find was £5,800 per year. 
the most expensive was, was, that I could find was £12,000 per year. Um, in addition to that, you have personal therapy fees to pay for and often supervision, although many courses do have placements within the NHS and the supervision would then be free. So, th so there are some additional add-on costs. However, good news girls, um, is the, um, there is currently a consultation that's been held um, by the, the government um, about the um, possibility of PhD loans. So I've put the link on there, it's not a definite so I'm not making any promises, um, but if they do bring in these loans that will be from 2018 onwards um, for PhDs and taught doctorates. So that would be really good news for those who want to pursue a career in psychology where that isn't funded. Um, of course, when you do qualify, um, the pay, paid work is, is, um, is, is, is very well paid and there are lots of job opportunities. Um, all of our students go on to, to work um, and work in a variety of areas as well. They're not limited to um, primary care or, or other areas that people think counsellor psychologists work in. They work in forensic settings, they work in the NHS, they work in eating disorder services and so on. You name it, then we'll have a student or a graduate, should I say, that's worked there. Right. Um, so what can you be doing now? Voluntary work without a doubt. If you haven't got any experience working face to face with people, then that's what I would suggest that you get. And it might just be one evening a week, but gain some experience. That will give you a good, um, a good lead into to the course. Um, and you might, you might um, either voluntary work or you may well kind of uh, secure some paid work, care assistant, support worker, any of those kinds of things. Um, read about counselling psychology. Find out what we're, we're about. Um, you can join the division. Um, it's very cheap for, for graduates. So you could join the division. You'll, you'll receive the counselling psychology review, a little booklet that's sent every few months to give you some information about it. Um, you can attend our conference if you live in Stratford-upon-Avon or you fancy a, a weekend away. Um, that's, a, that's a really good opportunity. Um, and of course, you can approach um, myself or, or any, any other counsellor and psychologist that you can locate to find out a bit more. I think it was mentioned earlier that, that networking, asking questions, meeting people. I was really fortunate to, to meet the ladies up there earlier on who, who just wanted to ask some questions, wanted to find out a little bit more. And that's what it's about, networking. So, undertake a certificate in counselling. If you can do a degree in psychology, you can do a certificate in counselling. It's usually a 10-week course. It's at a local college, further education college, but it gives you that leading. It gives you those skills and, and, and the relevant experience. And think about where you'd like to take your research. What, what, what are you passionate about? What excites you? Um, you've usually got to write somewhere between 30 and 50,000 words. Um, so find something that you're passionate about and think about the, the areas of, of, of research that you're interested in. And then if you go for an interview, at least you can talk tentatively about those ideas. So I've worked um, as a counselling psychologist within the NHS in the past. Um, I worked in a pain service. Um, I worked with people who were adjusting to managing um, uh, chronic pain conditions, but also many other things, often trauma. We work a lot with trauma as counselling psychologists, um, adjustment, anxiety, relationship issues. And I did a whole load of other things around working with groups. Um, I managed staff. I supervised staff. Um, I was the deputy head of the department for a short while, so I was leading uh, the team as well. We have supervision, we network with other psychologists. The job is rich and rewarding and it's very exciting um, and, and I, I thoroughly enjoyed that work. I only left because I went on to work at the university full time. Um, but for one day a week, um, I have my own private practice. I work with adults and children, many who've referred themselves, some who've been referred through insurance companies where they've maybe had a road traffic accident and they need an assessment um, for, um, for, for the, the trauma that they've experienced and some psychological therapy to help with the trauma. So a range of things that we do. So my tips are identify what type of psychologist you want to be. As you'll have seen already from today, the, the, the options are varied. Go with what feels right for you. Go with, with what fits for you as a, an individual. It's, it, this is not just a job, it's a, it's a way of being as far as I'm concerned. Um, conduct um, your research. Find out about the courses. Ask the questions. If you are interested in counselling psychology, um, I'm going to show you the book in a second. The Handbook of Counselling Psychology, uh, um, the fourth edition has been released this year. See it, the whole thing is a journey. This is a, this is a, don't see it as, oh, another three years of study. See it as another three years of experience, of gaining knowledge and skills, and ultimately being able to make a difference to other people's lives. And surely that's why we're attracted to psychology in the first place. But enjoy yourself, focus on self-care. 
we're great psychologists, but sometimes we're not great at looking after ourselves, and self-care is absolutely paramount. And self-belief as well, because if you believe you can do something, then you can convince everybody else. So these are some books I recommend. Trainee Handbook is a great book. Robert Bourne, Mary Watts. This is the latest edition, fourth edition, out this year. And the Handbook of Counselling Psychology I'd, I'd recommend as well. You can find both of those on, on Amazon. And you can contact me on either of those, uh, those routes for further information. And you can tweet about me, whether you liked me or not. I don't know. <laughs>